Andrew McCaw, IFL TV. I'm here at the MS Bank Arena. With me, I've got Liam Beefy Smith. Liam, haven't seen you since obviously the beginning of September. There, you've had a good break here. But before we talk about yourself, I want just want to touch on that little Terry you've got in the gym called Jack Turner. I mean, that guy is an absolute phenom. This planet is lucky he's not six foot four. Yeah, you know, and I remember standing doing an interview with him over in Dubai with you, mm -hmm. and I said, look, he's going to be exciting. You know, get behind him. Um, it's good to city now. We're going to see a little bit more of him as a pro. I think he got a great reception. You know, he's done a thousand tickets himself, and obviously the other so many thousands here have seen him. Now will probably jump on board because he's a likable kid. You know, I think he, you know, he come, he's come from nothing. He's had a bit of a tough background, and you know, it's great to see kids like that do well. But in a boxing sense, he's he's aggressive, exciting. Like for the flyweight or super flyweight, mate, he can have punch. And I said that to you. I don't know, was it over six months ago when we were in Dubai? Um, on his debut, I think it was. Um, you know, get behind him because it's going to be exciting. Whatever way it goes and however long it goes, it's going to be exciting. Beefy, when I was thinking about Scouts Liverpool boxing back when I was a fan and I was coming up and I was doing little bits in gyms, there was you, your brothers, there was Derry Matthews, there was Tony Bellews, there was loads of other Scouts fighters coming through and you always thought of Liverpool as the fighting hub of the UK. Now it's sort of maybe moving to a little bit to the North East a little bit when you've got guys coming, but do you think guys like Jack Turner, Frankie Stringer, Peter McGrail, they can now take that torch off you guys and like, make Liverpool the fighting city again? Definitely, like I said, they're, they're only not, not starting out. Like McGrail's at a decent level now, but maybe not top of the building arenas level, but he'll get there. And um, you know, the rest are coming through. Once, once Peter's top and Bills, Frankie, Jack will end up where Peter is now, you know, intercontinental title level. And then um, you know, the, 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 you know, give them two, three, four years, they'll end up where I don't mean to say where we was, but you know, like I say, we've had top of the bill fighters for years now. Me, Paul, Stephen, Callum. Teddy, Bellew, um, just, just, just a lot of fighters over a certain amount of years. Um, but we've still got good fights, we've got good fighters coming through. I think little Joe McGrail, Peter's brother, is unbeaten also. There's just loads, I'm not going to name them all because I'll leave someone out. But um, give them a few years. We haven't really got no one in between just yet, yeah. probably McGrail. Like I said, there's us coming to the end. McGrail's getting towards like the, the title level. And then you've got just all prospects around me make their way through but um, you know, I don't, don't think they will yeah it is it's looking bright give it a couple of years like I say mate we haven't got no one that in between just yet where the others have the other areas have but give us a few years we'll have good, good you know, top of the bill fighters you mentioned there that us coming to the end now obviously you you, you had your rematch with Chris Eubank Jr you made a lot I think now looking back on it the weight issue with you because you did go up in weight and you had a short time to get that weight off and it was more like a, a fat loss camp maybe than it was a camp to prepare for Chris Eubank Jr in your own words so yeah a month and a half out nearly have you had much time to reflect on it have you watched the fight back and what's your thoughts I've had, I've had, I've had since the next day to reflect on it like I said look I was, I was I was quiet and I stayed away I think it was well documented the injuries I had but you know I was quiet I said look I'll let Chris have his moment I had my moment when I beat him you can have his moment when I beat me, you know, we're, 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 we're two months from the fight now, six weeks from the fight, or whatever we are, and now I go back to drawing board and, you know, I let my body heal properly now with no, with no pressure, no pressure of a fight date, no pressure of making weight, no pressure of boxer, no pressure of losing the Chris Bank Jr. fight and then my contract being up the wall. You know, I can sit now and just let my body heal properly, which it's healing properly, you know, I've started training the game now. Um, do some strength stuff. I'm gonna start proper training now. I'm gonna train properly. Let you know. Let my body do it the proper way. You know, not rushing. Like I said last time. Like I say, look, I know people. People. Pe people jumped on me and said, "Well, you shouldn't be going that heavy." But it's a little bit hard. I to start camp at a certain weight. I start to camp at a weight and then got injured. Mm. And like I said, the injury I had. It's a little bit. You know, if I had a hand injury from sparring, I could go run. If I had a neck injury, I could go run. If I had, you know. I don't know. Like maybe a foot. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was. I couldn't do nothing. You know, nothing. It was. It was a bad injury. I had the MRI scan injuries. It was bulging on my spine. And, um, so, you know, no pressure now of having to make weight, having to be ready by this time, having to. You know, there was a, there was a lot. There was a lot behind closed doors that I had to deal with. Um, again, it was me. I chose to deal with them. I didn't think I'd be. As flat as I was on the night time, it's a great thing, you know, I thought. I just thought, make weight. I make the weight. I love a fight. With the crowd there, the adrenaline of a fight night. 
I never once thought I'd feel the way I felt. And it was just one of them flat performances from myself. Chris done his job. He turned up and performed. Um, you know, once once I decide what to do next, um, as in what way I go next, then we can dissect it. But again, all this bollocks that performance of Chris's career, how? How he starts the fight like he starts the last fight, jabbing and holding, jabbing and holding, jabbing and holding, and then, you know, round two, three, he thinks, hang on a minute, he's miles off of here, he's not counting, he's not even throwing punches back, so we got more confidence, the fight went on. Performance of his career, my ass, 15 middleweights in Britain would have beat me on that night. That's the way I look at it. I, I, I don't think I would say that. If you, but I'm, te I'm, te I'm genuinely deadly serious now, 15 middleweights in Britain would have beat me on that night. That's the gospel too. That that just hold me on. Like, and, and it, it didn't take a good fight to beat me on that night. What's next for you? Obviously, the 160 pound. I think you're still ranked at 154. If that's an option down there, I know you still got a governing body ranking down there at WBO. Um, would you stick it around 160? Would you go down to 154? Um, I know, like after a loss, well, after a win against Chris Eubank Jr., a lot, a lot of people were calling you out because obviously the, the fashion that you stopped them. But now you've got that loss. There's a lot of people now saying maybe he's past his best. Maybe we'll fight him now. Everything happens for a reason. That's great for me. You know, people think. People think I was finished off here. You know, if I, if I had a good camp and I performed well and lost like that as I retired in the ring, as I jumped out of the ring, I would have been embarrassed to do an interview. I, as I retired straight away, I'm man enough. I think you've known me over the years now. And look, I know how good a family I've got. And I know they'd be the first to tell me. We told Paul, you know, with a brick lads of signs, you know, we, we, and I've got too many good people around me to tell me, but I know. One million percent again, bro. Going over everything I've just said in the, you know, the last five minutes, the reasons why I performed the way I performed, and you know, look, I have a good camp. I perform like that after a gun cab, I walk away, and I walk away. My head's all day. I'm, I'm not ashamed to to walk away from it. You know, it, I don't worry. I love boxing. I love fighting. But when the time comes, the time comes, and I'm not. I won't be afraid. I've, I've achieved well more out of boxing than I ever set out. I didn't even want to box. I've had, I've got, a, you know, I've got a good life. I've got, I've achieved good things, and I've met great people. I'm not, I will not, never be ashamed to walk away from this sport when the time comes. But the time's definitely not now after that. That, that, be, that being said, then Liam, what is the motivation now? Is it these big fights like the Chris Eubank Jr. fights that get you built or the world title? Exactly the same as it was before. Mm. I just had a terrible performance from my point of view, and somebody capitalised on it, and it just seemed to be Chris um, again. But you know, let's let's strip everything back. It's 1-1. One, one. I stopped him in four rounds. He stopped me in ten. It's 1-1. One, one. I feel I stopped him better than he stopped me. Do you know what I mean? Um, I feel he'll take that and run because he knows he'll never beat me that easy again. Never, ever beat me that easy again. Um, I feel he'll take it and run, but, you know, like I say, when I say take it and run, I think he's happy with that win. He'll go and try and fight Conor now if, if, if everything's, you know, open for him to fight him. But, if they fight in December, look, I'll sit and wait for the winner, I'll sit and wait for the loser, I don't care. I'm not going to fight December, because I said before, I'm going to let my body heal properly. But anything from February, I'll take. I was going to say that, obviously, that fight coming up, and will you be there ringside? Because your name has been mentioned with both Connor and, obviously, Chris Eubank Jr. So, again, that's a huge fight, a fight that you can get your teeth into, either one, the trilogy with Chris or a fight with, uh, with Connor Ben. Now, will you be ringside? And if you are... Can you pick a winner in that one? Uh, look, I, look I, I, I'll be doing sacks, so I'll be there like, just to see who wins. Uh, I might be there as, I don't know, as a match ring fighter. I might be there as, a, as, as looking on from the outside. Might, I've got no promotional contact with anybody at the moment. So, again, I'm just going to sit and let, what, do, do what's best for me at the moment. And I'm happy. As much as I was sick, I was sick losing the way I lost it. Look, uh, again, Chris Jr. should never stop me in the month of Sundays. He doesn't punch hard enough to stop me. I know it's, it's easy to say now, but, you know, obviously I was just fucked in the fight, and I feel like that's what stopped me. It, uh, it kills me that he's got a stoppage win over me. He shouldn't have, because I don't think he stops me if I'm 100%. If he went on to win the fight, he goes on to win the fight. But I don't think Kishu Bank Jr. should stop me. Um, but I'm happy at the moment now, once, you know, the future, I'm happy that my body's healing, my ankle's healing okay. My back's been great since, you know, a couple of weeks before the fight. Um, no, three, three, three and a half, four weeks before the fight. I never had no trouble out my back. Um, my ankles healed great since the fight. So I'm happy the way it's healing with no pressure. Like I said, I had a lot of pressure in the in the, in the eight weeks leading up to, to the last fight with contracts, weight, 
dates. Um, you know, just being threatened that Kissel walk away. That was basically what I was getting threatened with Kissel walk away from the fight and, you know, my contract's then null and void and whatever else. So I'm happy now. Oh, he's actually trying to get his. He's, 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 go on and jump in, jump in. Oh, hello. Uh, you <laughs> take that for me, please, man. I love the guy. Oh, oh, thanks for You better work, though, because he actually tried to get you to fight down until a second. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll fight any man, bro. You might not win, but I'll still fight him. <laughs> oh, thanks nice very much. The pleasure of nice me. Thank you. Cheers, Tom. Thanks, mate. Tom, tonight, is a fan of yours, Liam? I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. You know what I mean? I'm happy recovering. Um, and I'm happy to be back in the gym then with, with no pressure. I want to talk about that gym then, one last one before you go, because you've got you in there. The, the, the world Ch ex world champion or the old head Josh Taylor undisputed but then you've got all these Jack Turners the Frankie Stringers the JJ Metcalf you've got guys in the middle guys at the beginning guys at the end I mean the gym right now is just a, a pool of just talent, talented fighters from the top to the bottom so it's, what's it like training in that rotunda gym all them guys look you want to see the buzz around us obviously it's a great gym to be in obviously they've got all my family in there as well um, all the lads who keep fitting there are, are like family to me and the coaches are like family to me, that's why I joined them, you know what I mean? They're never mind the good coaches, they were like family to me, so it's great, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. It was nothing to do with that, why I lost, it was, it was like I said, it was, it was plain to see why I, why I performed, not why I lost, because like I said, I could have performed great and still lost the fight, I'm not taking anything away in that sense, but I mean, my performance, and I also could have boxed bad and won, but I'm just blaming my performance on what happened, you know, in the seven week beforehand. Liam, what I will say is that you do look happy, you do sound happy, and you seem a little bit more hungry as well to get back in there and maybe get back to winning ways. Yeah, look, it's made me more hungry than ever. Like I said, look, I've, I've, I was coming for a few people. Um, like I said, you know, I, I had me, I had it out with Carl Frotch, what I thought. People, you see people just throw in the bush quite quick, quite easy. I seen Derek Rizzora trying, give me a little bit, saying I got my ass whooped and all that. I'm like, come on, Derek, you've got promoters in Britain, Harris needs to retire. You know, that's like, you, you, at the minute you're like a punch bag, and if I was at heavyweight, I'd have made you. So don't, don't, don't come for me. I've one bad loss. I was saying I was making excuses. Was, the only excuse that got me was what everyone saw my ankle, not nothing else. I'm telling you now, the ankle was not the issue. Do you know if I was in the fight and the fight was a boss fight, the adrenaline would have overrides the ankle easy because I was flat as a pancake. I was thinking, this sounds crazy. I felt like I was bored because I just thought it's killing me. The fact that. I can't jump in quick enough. I was that flat. I couldn't jump in with my feet. I couldn't jump out with my feet. Round five, Chris tried to finish me in round five and never. And he was fucked. And it was breaking my heart, walking after him round the ring, thinking, you're fucked and I can't even put the pressure on you here. Because I just, I, I really had no legs to push in, jump in with a sharp one, two or anything. I was just, I was flat. But, you know, after someone mentioned the ankle to Gerard, he was like, oh, don't fuck off with the excuses. He got his ass whooped. I'm like, come on, Derek. And I've knew you long enough, don't try and, don't try and kick a man while he's down, mate, because otherwise you've lost over 10 fights. You promoted your Harris and you have to retire, don't dare come for me. Well, Liam, I think you've probably got maybe, you could, maybe one more if Parsons gets a hold of you. Um, but listen, go and enjoy the rest of the night, and well done to Jack Turner and that gym, and it's flying, like I said, and always a pleasure to see you, Liam, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, Liam. Thank you.